You're welcome back. Uh, we were talking about uh, what policy the CBN has brought uh, about the maximum withdrawals that can be done per day and per week and even per month as the case may be. But we also would like you to know that since this week has been a very, very interesting week, we had some personalities that came here that if we have time, we are going to do a sort of recap, maybe bring you some of the governorship uh, candidates that are contesting in Lagos and elsewhere uh, for you to hear what they said in case you missed it. That is if we will have the time to do that. In the meantime, uh, we did promise you that we are going to be joined by Abdul Qadir Habib. In fact, I think when I was introducing him, I called him Abdul Razak. That was so wrong. Okay, so his name is Abdul Qadir Habib. He is an entrepreneur and an environmental activist. Uh, Mr. Habib, welcome to the program. Thank you and good morning. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so many people have been talking and reacting to this uh, peg that the CBN has brought for withdrawals of money. As an entrepreneur, we want to hear uh, how you feel about it, how it is going to affect businesses like the ones that you run. Thank you. When the CBN announced uh, the policy, at the first instance, I was like indifferent because uh, these policies basically they have been existing in one form or the other, and people like us have been trying to minimize our use of cash because of the ease of transacting online and other channels like that. But on deep uh, on a deep dive. And after listening to a lot of people, we realized that there are a lot of merits in the long term, but there are a few demerits in the short term. So for entrepreneurs, there have to be adjustment because the, there is a very short term for the implementation. So like with every change, it is going to, to hit us, it is going to hit people, it is going to hit businesses hard, but then you have to adjust, you have to go back to the drawing board and uh, recalibrate. Because when you look at it critically, you know that this policy is good for the country in the long run. Because uh, money being in the financial system, using tra doing transactions with trails is very good for national security as well. Because when you transact through these mediums and these channels, it, can, it always leaves trail. That is why there's a popular magazine that says, follow the money. Once you are able to trail every transaction, it is possible to track almost any kind of crimes committed using funds. Okay, uh, can we go into specifics of uh, this, how it is going to impact the businesses? Because I did hear from the uh, governor of the central bank that they're not going to be very rigid. They will, they will revise this policy from time to time to see how it works for the good of the people. So maybe some of these problems, they may not have known it, and it's, it could known them rather. And it could be part of the things that will be, they will be looking at uh, when they are revising or if they need to revise this policy even before it starts. So give us some specifics that you think uh, will be how you think it will, it will impact the businesses that you do. Because general term is going to hit us, is going to be very hard for us for some time and all that. We need to know what specifically uh, it will do to businesses. Okay. To answer your question, for my kind of businesses, there's almost no impact because we hardly run on cash. But for other businesses that are small, there are a lot of businesses that rely on cash and they cannot go uh, digital right now. Then they are going to have, there are going to be problems because so many uh, clients will not be able to withdraw enough cash to pay for the services or goods. So I don't know. I believe a lot of businesses are going to lose patronage, which, which is going to affect their bottom line. But specifically in my own kind of business, there's hardly any, any, uh, there's hardly any, if any ill effect on us. 
Interesting. Okay, how would you rate... Mr. Abdul Kadir. Okay, sorry. Go, go no, no, ahead. No. Okay, uh, <laughs> let me just come to... Let me leave it to you, Bayo. Let me yeah, leave it no, to you, I, Bayo. I wanted to... Th thanks, Diango. I wanted to pick up on what uh, Abdul Kadir said, which, mm. which is... He, he made a distinction between two types of businesses, and he said his kind of business is will definitely not be negatively impacted. Yeah. But then he made a very good point that there are a lot of small businesses uh, that depend on cash transactions. And the question that I would like him to, uh, to answer is, does he think that uh, right from when the CBN you know, began promoting a cashless uh, environment, cashless philosophy, does he think that government, maybe through the National Orientation Agency, has done enough to prepare the minds of people to do this complete conversion. If I just add quickly, you know, I was very small when uh, we changed from driving on the left to driving on the right. And even in primary schools, we all knew Nigeria was going to be driving on the right because there was a massive campaign you know, and even in the times of Babangida, and we've seen you know, when Jerry Ghana was, uh, uh, I think, MAMSA, you know, I, I've forgotten the full acronym, what it means now. I think whatever, but MAMSA was some sort of orientation agency. So do you think government has done enough to prepare people's minds to the extent now where they will say this CBM policy may be taking them by surprise? No, government has not done enough at all. Because this kind of policies, you are supposed to enlighten people, show them how it benefits their businesses, how it benefits them. But there's nothing like that. There is no orientation. And even to make matters worse, when you do transactions and you have problems, banks are not helpful in resolving this kind of problems, which further push people away from using these channels. When you have dispense error or you have certain things like that, Banks take months, weeks. Sometimes you even just forget the money and leave it with them. That is discouraging for small businesses and even individuals. Another aspect is so much levies and tax being uh, inserted into online transactions. Now I don't even know how many. When you make a simple transfer of 5,000, you get like three alerts. The money, there's one VAT, there's one 25 Naira. I don't even know how much. So all these things are very discouraging and there are some of the reasons why people are not trusting of these kind of things. So to be honest with you, government failed in its duty to sanitize people, to encourage them to use these mediums. So truly this, this policy came as a shock to most people because you cannot, it is just like uh, punishing a lot of small business holders and individuals. Because this system you've put in place, some people are so averse to it because it's detrimental to them. You've not been able to create an atmosphere whereby they will trust it, whereby their uh, questions will be asked. National Orientation Agency, to say the least, is uh, ineffective for a long time now. So before CBN will roll out this uh, kind of policy, they should have been engaging with people, not only from uh, National Orientation Agency angle, even from the local angle, sending agents to sanitize the people, to give them, to uh, explain to them why this has to happen and how they will be protected in all of this. So no, the government failed in its duty to the people on this. Just just a quick follow-up uh, before Yangu comes in. You, 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 you mentioned something very important now, uh, talking about small businesses and the various regimes of um, levies or fees that uh, that attend upon digital transaction and i was wondering if a small business is making 30 naira on a on, on an item and and then there's a digital payment and you have to pay 25 naira and then you have to pay 1.7 something for that and the profit is gone no yes you're right the profit is gone so I don't know how you want to explain it to a business owner now that he should sacrifice his profit because you want Nigeria to move to the cashless economy. Normally, when you want to promote this type of uh, policies, you are supposed to give incentives. 
They are supposed to make it at almost no cost to businesses to incentivize, even if you cannot add something as incentive on top. They are not supposed to be losing their hard-earned money paying all these levies. So I think government have to sit down and critically look at how they are going to negatively impact small businesses. Before we even get to the aspect of infrastructure in our rural areas, because so much, so many rural areas cannot even support this. When there is no network, how can you do transfer? Where there is no network or there is no electricity, how do you charge your device? How do you charge the POS devices? So there is a lot of question for government to answer on how they see this policy working. But to be honest with you, this policy is going to kill a lot of small businesses or at least affect their profit and sustainability. So the ease of doing business that we have been clamoring for and the government have been promoting, even if it was existing, this might just kill it. Okay, um, let's just look at the banking system uh, in its entirety. Um, do you have any any confidence in the banking system that uh, more will be done to make sure that the people who are supposed to invest in the banks or to, to, to save in the banks and all that are going to be protected. How would you describe the banking system in the first place? Have they reached where they should reach or are there things that they need to do to make that sector better and to the advantage of the people? It is sad to say but I think in the last two years, our banks have had actually regressed. We used to, so many uh, transactions that you could do in the past, seamlessly. Now, there are a lot of problems, you cannot do it. So I, don't, I believe our banking system has actually regressed from where it was. And I don't, be, I don't, have, any, I don't have enough confidence in them that they will be able to protect uh, their customers when this policy kicks in. Because most many of the banks are even reducing their uh, branches. And branches are usually where you go to, to resolve transaction issues. When you phone their hotlines to uh, complain or give them your information about what you need to be done, you might, you might be kept waiting for two hours. And it is not toll free. So I don't have the, I don't have the confidence that they are yet where they, they should be for this policy to work. The banking system, unless forced by the uh, operator, by the regulator, that is the CBN, are not ready for this. And they are not even protective of customers enough. In the last six months, we have so much from different banks where customers' money will be withdrawn without OTP, while the customer has his phone, his uh, ATM card, everything protected, and the banks, are not able to resolve the issues appropriately. So anybody that tells you they have high confidence in our banks to actually pull this up, I think they are in la-la land. I don't believe they are ready for this. Infrastructure-wise, manpower-wise, and technical, technically speaking. In the rural areas, many of the bankies, banks have closed their branches. How do you expect Rural people, some of them only believe when they take their money to the bank physically. So how do you expect them to deposit? How do you expect them to complain and get their issues resolved? So I believe the NCC, which is the regulator for the uh, security infrastructure, and the CBN, who is the regulator for the banking system, needs to hold the banks to task and ensure that they improve on their customer service, protection of customers, uh, money and everything everything uh, that is required to make this policy a success but for now no i'm not confident that they are able uh, but what if the central bank does not do what you're proposing now they seem to be like bedfellows with the commercial banks so if it is profiting the commercial banks and they are uh, working hand in hand and they fail to do it is there anything that the business community itself can do to make sure that they also, uh, the government meets them maybe halfway? Well, yes. I believe the organized uh, business community, I'm talking of the real B 
big dogs in the business community. They can engage the banking owner, the bank owners. They can engage people in different stratas that are co that are connected to the banks, and engage government on how they believe we, the business community and consumers need strong protection and customer service, which is for now wishful thinking. Because I don't know, I don't know who will convince such type of things at this time we are in where everything that is on the front burner is politics. So I think the business community need leaders to stand up now and speak up for them, engage government, engage the banking sector, engage the CBN to ensure that the small business holders and individuals on the lower and middle strata are not strangled by the inefficiencies of the banks and the uh, quick fire policy by the CBN. Yeah, but uh, uh, if I yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah, bio, go ahead. I, I I just wanted to quickly follow up because um, Abdul Kadir mentioned again two key things. I mean, from from what he said, two key issues come up. One is consumer protection, um, and um, I believe there's a consumer protection agency. Um, but it's interesting again to, but I may be wrong, uh, but I seem to think this Consumer Protection Agency has been quiet uh, for some time. Uh, there was a period when it was very vocal in the aviation sector because of so many things happening, delaying flights, ca flight cancellation, passengers just being stranded. Uh, but I didn't hear anything else. So what exactly is that Consumer protection agency is supposed to be doing now, Abdul Kadri. And I, and I want to tie to that as a double barrel question, as they say in Nigeria. Um, customer service of the banks. Uh, banks are supposed to have a customer service, but you are absolutely correct. I mean, even those who are just normal bank customers who don't do business, uh, if you do a normal transaction, you pay, and uh, the, the, the business tells you there's a problem, go to your bank, to resolve it, to reverse it, you know, and like you rightly said, there's a big problem there. So the customer services in banks, what exactly are they doing? And then the Consumer Protection Agency, what has it been doing? And have you benefited in any way uh, from, from the work of the Consumer Protection Agency? Thank you. Uh, the uh, Consumer Protection Agency, I believe two years back, in the last two years, there was a time they were very vocal and very active, both in the aviation sector and even on some other, in some other sectors where people have reported massively about wrongdoings going on there. I remember there was a restaurant, a Chinese restaurant in Lagos that was not allowing Nigerians, they were not uh, allowing Nigerian customers to patronize them and such issues like that. They were very active at that time. But in the last few months, I don't know, I think they've gone cold. But also in the last one year, there was a time I had issue with the bank. I had uh, a transaction error. I was not paid the money by the ATM and I was debited. So I reported to the bank and uh, they said they promised two weeks to resolve it. It was not resolved. Then I emailed, I went to the Consumer Protection Agency's uh, website there's a, there's a form you can fill for such, and I filled it. After filling it, then uh, I saw a post on social media about some uh, somebody mentioning what consumer agency did for them, and there was a number there. So I took the number and also contacted the number. Let me just say my issue was resolved, but I could not be certain whether it was resolved because I filled the form on their website or because I followed up through another channel. But on social media, I saw a bit of feedback about people getting their issues resolved. But on the banking sector, I have so much complaints that if the Consumer Protection Agency wants to only face banking issues, I think they will have their hands full. Because there's so much, so much complaints from customers, businesses. And the banks, when you go there, the, the customer uh, agents are always swamped. Sometimes you pity them. The banks are not 
having enough manpower in those departments. That is one of the uh, Achilles heels. They are not recruiting enough. And sometimes they recruit people that don't even understand their own system. When you lay complain, as you are talking, this person doesn't even know what you are talking about. Somebody that is in the customer agent is supposed to be a bit knowledgeable about how their system works. That, oh, okay, this is a problem. Okay, fill this form. If this is it, fill this other form. But no, sometimes they don't even know what to do. So both of you will just be confused and looking at each other. So I think banks should have a, a minimum amount of customer agents they should have in their banking sector. A minimum training they should have about their operations. A minimum standard of how to attend to customers, not chewing gum and talking to customers. Then after that, I believe those also on the uh, phones handling customers' complaint, there should also be the same uh, training for them, the same number of recruitment for them, and then the banks should try and have toll-free lines for complaints. Not that you keep me on hold for two hours while my airtime is burning, and when I, when I ended up talking to the agent, she doesn't even know what to do, or she's telling me, eh, I think she'll do this or do that, but it's better you go to our branch. If I wanted going to the branch, if it is convenient, do you think I will burn two hours of airtime listening to your advert and music to talk to you? So the banks need to sit up, in, uh, increase manpower in the customer service, more training for them, both technically in their operations and how to serve customers better. Okay. And the uh, consumer protection agency, they also need more manpower because I realize they are also very, very much restricted. I think their branches are very, very small. We have so much going on in Nigeria that they need a lot of manpower too, and they need to have a toll-free line rather than just email and forms. Okay, uh, well, uh, we would encourage people to still go to the website of the Consumer Protection and see how you can contact them, pending when you can find that number. Maybe there's just a number there that you can call and all that. I hear that any time a complaint is made to them, they really take up this matter. They're not going to tell you something like, uh, uh, bring foil money, maybe we'll go find person we lost. I know some people who do that. Uh, but the people who are having the concern about this uh, pegging of uh, uh, the uh, maximum withdrawal per day and per week are not only the businessmen. Sometimes uh, politicians as well are worried. And it depends on which divide you are. Some are saying that it is for the better as the 2023 election comes. Some, some are saying uh, it is for the worse as 2023 elections come. How do you as an individual think that is going to impact on the 2023 election, this policy that the CBN has brought? I think uh, if it is faithfully and thoroughly implemented, it is going to help curb vote, vote buying to, to a large extent because such things are mostly done with cash to leave no trails. So if the CBI is faithful such that every party has a level playing ground, everybody is made to obey the law, I think it is going to help in the area of curtailing or reducing vote buying by cash on the day of election. I don't know if it can be circumvented, but I believe I'm very positive about it, and I'm even happy about it, that if this policy works and is implemented, we might actually have an election that vote buying will be very, very much minimized compared to the past elections. So I'm hoping the CBN is faithful in its implementation, and the politicians understand that uh, the game has changed. There's a new sheriff in town, as they say. So that's just uh, but my the, <clears throat> the fear that some people are having is that this policy is going to begin in in January. On the 9th of January, I think, that's when everything will begin in earnest, that you cannot uh, withdraw. And the money in circulation, the new money, will start circulating from... from it has started circulating from now. And uh, by this, from this time to the 9th of January might be enough for some people to to collect the money that they will need to finance this election. Secondly, some people are also 
thinking that vote buying has gone to a, a, a different spectrum where governors now are saying, uh, using the word empowerment and, and giving people money that was not even budgeted for in the first place and nobody knows how that sub head is called or anything. They're just giving empowerment money and that money will last between now and the end of election. No, no legislation for the money to continue, nothing of that sort. They're just giving out money like that. And they call it vote buying. So do you really think that this policy is good enough to prevent vote buying, knowing that people don't even need to go to the streets anymore to give people uh, handouts of 2,000 Naira and 3,000 Naira? Well, with the era of uh, vote buying, their empowerment, if it, is, if it can be called that, I believe there's little we could do about it. But if the money is not legislated for, I believe people in their jurisdiction or constituency, if they are sure that the money, because that is misappropriation, if the money is not uh, budgeted for, I believe the only thing they can do is take it up with uh, the anti-corruption agencies. About that, about that. But regarding the the first uh, point you made that the new currency is in uh, circulation already and that some people might be able to get enough before now and the February, uh, January 9th uh, deadline when the, when the withdrawal limit starts, then that, is, that would be unfortunate. Because even from now, when anybody goes for huge withdrawal, I believe there should be questions asked. Because knowing that from next month, there's going to be a limit. What exactly are you going to do with this amount of cash? Because on a good day, you should start planning. You should start practicing a policy that is, a policy that is going, coming on board by uh, January from now. So why exactly do you need this amount of cash? And usually when people collect a huge amount of cash consecutively for a few days, whether politi politically exposed persons or individuals, normally I believe there is a tracking mechanism to see exactly what they do and why they will need that amount of money. So I believe on this also, the EFCC, the, IS, the ICPC, the N NFIU have to be on the alert to ensure that people don't circumvent these laws because with every law, people try to find loopholes to uh, circumvent it. So I just hope, I cannot say categorically that it will not happen, but I just hope those in charge, those who are supposed to know better, do, do what is good for the country and make sure that nobody gets undue advantage on this. Okay, uh, just... If I take you... Yeah. Just Yambu, you. if I just, if I, yeah, if I just quickly follow up uh, with that, uh, the National Assembly, uh, we've seen in, in news reports, that the National Assembly, after uh, interacting with the governor of the Central Bank, um, was not very happy with the position of the CBN governor because the governor insisted that the policy has come to stay, uh, but the National Assembly uh, feels otherwise. Of course, the National Assembly is made up of politicians, okay? <laughs> Rightly or wrongly, their action might be that you know misinterpreted maybe they have good intentions but but then the feeling is that this policy as you have said and suggested is actually going to impact negatively on politicians who wish to buy votes uh, and, and maybe some might therefore interpret the position of the national assembly uh you know of wanting the policy reversed to mean that the politicians want to scuttle it uh, what's, what's your reaction to that? My reaction is that uh, the CBN has sat down with its experts and came up uh, with this policy. They know exactly why they came up with it. They believe and told us it is for the greater good of the country. They know that if implemented, it is going to affect those on the lower cadre of the economy and the middle class, then if they allow politicians for whatever, if it is a selfish reason the politicians give, if they allow them to prohibit them, to allow to make them uh, reverse this policy, then I think it is on them 
Because I don't think constitutionally the National Assembly can force the CBN to back down on this. I'm not a lawyer. But if the Constitution does not allow for that to happen, so I believe if they, they are surely doing it for the greater good of the country, then they should stick to it and see it through. Politicians will always find ways. Just because there is no way today doesn't mean that if politicians know that this policy will stand, they will find their loopholes. It might be minimal, but they will find it. So if the CBN is telling us this for the greater good, and we should bear with them and bear the pains, then everybody should bear the pain, since we are all for the greater good, especially the, the top class, the first class citizens, as we, as we call them. They should also bear the pain and bear with us. We, are all, we all want a better Nigeria. Okay, uh, well, um, Mr. Habib, um, I'd just like you to say a final word to your community as in the business community uh, due to how you feel about this policy. If you think it's a good one, uh, talk to them to encourage them. If you think it's not very good enough, uh, then let's proffer solutions and see that, like you said, they should be patient. I've taken that already. But any other final word you'd like to talk to Nigerians about or your particular business community, just go ahead and do that before we wrap it up on the segment, please. Okay, I think to the business communities, we have egghead, we have uh, scholars, and we have uh, uh, experts on finance. I think now is the time to come together and see how it impacts the greater majority. Because I might be, I might be speaking from a privileged uh, position, I don't know. So I believe now is for us to listen to everybody in the community and see how we can help mitigate the, impact, uh, the, the negative impact it's going to have on them. If we can see that the negative impact is greater than the positive impact, then the business community should come together, reach out to all those that should be reached out to the CBN and the Minister of uh, Finance and Budget and whatever, and see what we can do and especially the office of the vice president who is in charge of the ease of doing business in Nigeria, I think we should engage them and lay our fear to them, especially those that are going to be negatively impacted and how the economy might be worse for it in the short term. Mm. So we can find ways to uh, engage CBN and encourage them to make the policy to, uh, to be lenient in the enforcement such that people that have special needs and concerns will be accommodated so that it will not become a punishment for the business community okay. because so that it will be uh, a policy implemented with a human face okay i uh, would like to thank you mr abdul kadir uh, habib for coming on the show you are a businessman we we pray for what do they say, Azabi? How do they call it? <laughs> Pray for more money in your account and hope that the deductions will not make you go broke. Uh, <laughs> and to everybody else who is watching, let's be patient a little bit. And where there are concerns, like Mr. Habib has said, let us try to see how the relevant people can be engaged. Mr. Habib, thank you so much for being a part of our program. Thank you very much for having me. Have a good day. You too. We'll now take a break, and when we return, we'll try to do a recap of uh, some of the... Uh, uh, personalities that we've had on the program in the course of the week so that you get to hear some of the things that they said because all of them had ample opportunity to say a lot of things even though they are not all the things that they wanted to say but the little that you, we can play for you today we're hoping that you'll get something and you'll ask the relevant questions and we're still very open uh, in our social media handles at plus tv africa both on twitter and on instagram you can ask your questions there so if it cannot be answered on air we'll make sure that the person who needs to answer those questions answers them either by coming back to the studio or sending in the answers that we need to relate to you in the meantime don't go anywhere. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us.